What's up everybody, this is Spare with a Gun from Sleepless Nights, back with another episode of How to Train Your Turtle. Um, today... What was I gonna do today? We did the painting thing. Let's go take a look. Um, and I... I did test it. Oh yeah, I ripped out my farms, by the way. Um, I need to fill that back in. But I did test it, as you can see, I got two strips of white going all the way down. Um, it does work, but as my theory was correct in that you kind of have to follow it along. Um, and uh, when when it decides to craft, you have to go over and like click the crafting turtle for some reason. At least in my case. Um, but oh, that's right. I have an I have a uh, um, a thing. I have a thing I want to do. And that is this stuff, right? So all these walls have a lot of resources on them, right? But what I want to do is eventually I'm going to go off of this and build up and make my walls, right? Because I think I'm finally getting squared away now. Um, hence the open wall command was supposed to tear down the wall, you know, all that good stuff. But there's all this stuff that I'm going to cover up. And you know me, I'm too I'm too lazy to go through and do all this by hand. I've done a little bit of it, but all the upper and ceiling and blah, blah, blah. Not my thing. Just don't want to do it. Don't want to take the time. So the next best thing is a turtle, right? Because we can program this guy. What I think I want to do is... um. This is just my... Here, let me get rid of this slime. Um, this is just my ballpark overview of what I want to do. I want to be able to place him somewhere. And I think because the idea here is just to dig out the important stuff, I will have already cleared out the area, is the idea. Dude, get out of my... Freaking bat. Um... So, my idea is that what I want it to do is just go straight up until it hits its head on, on the ceiling, basically. Because this is going to be the, um, I don't know what to call this yet, but basically getting the ores from the walls. I'm going to have a separate script for the ceiling. Um, and I'll probably have a different paint script for the ceiling, too. That'll be other episodes or... I don't know, something. I might just do them. But what I'm thinking is, you'd really need interactive sorters or whatever to know what items these are, unless you do a compare. Right? So what I need to do is figure out what items it could possibly run into that I don't want. And that would be marble is one... Um, dirt, stone, cobble, so that's four, and gravel and sand is probably the other ones that I don't want. I don't think anything else will show up in the natural walls. I don't think. So we need five things, but basically what I'm going to do is put them up here in these slots and they're going to be instead of using an interactive sorter I'm just going to run compares like a loop that compares to those different things um, and we'll basically check to see if like when it gets to that guy it's going to see is it stone, is it cobble, is it dirt, marble, sand, or gravel? No? Okay, then I want to dig it. And then um, Excuse me. I'm going to have a another part that checks, similar to our other ones, that checks to see if there's something in every slot, then turn around with an ender chest, place it, dump, turn back around, keep going, um, etc. So I'm going to probably... Alright, let's grab him. Okay, so... We're, make, we're getting progress, people. Getting progress. Almost there. Um, I am gonna... I did, uh, find out 
I'm going to have to rip all this out and do it over again for two reasons. One, when I first built this, I didn't have the idea of making an underground lab like I do now. And so now this is going to clash with the construction foam. And then on top of it is that, um, as we talked about in a previous episode... Um, really? Really? Thank you. Doors. Doors are hard. As we talked about in a previous episode, um, I'm probably going to change this system eventually um, to where the edges are backwards barrels so it looks like this full of or just have a piece of cobble or whatever in them and then there'll be every other strip will be open and what I think I might do I got the idea I've been watching a lot of generic bees and B double O's episodes and I got this idea from them of if this is an empty strip where the turtles come out is I might micro block this with some kind of wood that matches the color or something um, so that it looks kind of flush and it'll just stick out a little bit and then I'll put little micro strip frames around the items and then that way it'll look like this is all one wall but then it lets the turtles move in and out as they need um, type of thing so I may do that um, yeah, and I'm not I haven't worked out exactly how I want to do this. I've thought of every a turtle, everything named for each object, like redstone ore, oil sands, sapphire ore, and then that one would just come out, come out every time it's called. More likely what I'll end up doing is programming one f per level that stays over here, comes out, turns, and then if it's on this level, do that. If not, then it goes... You know, until it finds what it needs, type of thing. Um, I'm still toying around with how I want to do this, but um, because of the decorum clash and the functionality of the barrels for turtles that I want to eventually do, um, yeah, this is eventually going to have to to go. But oh yeah, I, f I don't think I mentioned that before. Um, I have a I added a glowstone bee, the glowering. Yeah, Glowering Bee, and I took off their negative effects. Um, I hit them with a Tolerate Temp 3, so it'll work in normal conditions, as it is here, normal and damp. Um, and then I also gave them the Longest Life, Fastest Production, and um, the Explorer effect. So that's why I'm gaining XP, that's what the blinging thing was for. The other reason that I'm going to tear this out is because this is only one floor. Um, and I thought about doing just, an, as you can see with this layer here, I thought about just building another floor on top of it and doing all of this again. But as I got to thinking about it, it really doesn't need to be stretched out this far. I could actually have all this more compact inside um, with the tubes that way and then have other sets as needed and I may just take it all the way up. And just And especially if I can get the turtle part working, that is going to be a huge project. Um, and most likely... What I'll end up doing is, for the most part, I will probably end up doing all of it off camera and make sure it's working. And then when that's that happens, then I will go back and um, then I'll actually show what I did instead of doing it on camera. Because this is a really complex code and it's going to take a while to actually iron out how all of it's going to work. Um, so I'd probably, I'd rather do that off camera and then come back and just show you how it actually works instead of having to, um, do something and then fix it and then do something and fix it. I'd rather just do it all. And so I've been working on that in the back of my head, um, on how I want to do that. I haven't actually started to implement it yet because I want to get the rest of the floor and everything finished, which as you can tell, the painting, the filling the floor, filling the wall, all that kind of stuff. Um, actually, I don't know that I showed you my fill wall script that I did. It was a script that I made that actually made this wall over here that you can see is now all construction foam. Um, I had a turtle do all that. Other than the, the foaming part, um, I actually did that part by hand with another turtle. I used Raph and just had him move down every little bit and then I'd spray the foam and move down and then I'd pick all the scaffolding back up. Um, 
That actually took a while, though. That's that's not going to be fun. I'm not I'm not looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, you can tell that most of these scripts I'm writing are to try and get this stuff done as quickly as possible. Um, but this is kind of the... Well, no, I still have to take that wall out. I was going to say this is kind of the halfway mark when it hits this this uh, room over here because all that's done, but I guess it's really not because um, there's still all this to do and then that way and I've got to take the rest of this wall out and take that chunk out too. <sighs> so much work. Um, I did modify the fill floor a little bit and what it basically does is it goes along and if it goes over, instead of leaving holes as you can see, it actually picks these up, places a scaffold down, moves up and places the torch back down. So it's basically moving all of these lights and it's just lifting them up a level so that when it's done, it's just on the scaffolding now. Um, saved me, it sounds stupid, but it saves me a ton of time. It, you wouldn't believe how much time that saved me is it picking up all the lights on its own. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go use my advanced computer because I much prefer programming on it. Actually, well yeah, I'm going to work on this script a little bit and then I will come back and show you what I've got after a quick word from our sponsors. Okay, and I'm back. I know, I know, it was a long time. A lot of sponsors to listen to. I get it. It's tough. I know. <sighs> we got to do something about that. I mean, it just, it takes forever. Anyways, okay, so I've been working on the script, and ta-da, we got it done. Um, it actually works really well, too. Um, I was very happy with it, because it's one of the few that I've actually done that didn't need, um, uh, scripts. <laughs> yeah, this script doesn't need a script. Don't even worry about it. No, um, it doesn't need arguments. You don't have to type in or figure out your coordinates. You just plop it down, tell it to do, and it, it, it go. It go. Um, it is important to note, though, I, I listed these um, as comments, but there's not actually anything in the code that specifies them, so you can mix and match stone and cobble or, you know, whatever. Um, I did try and keep it somewhat uh, keep in mind that it checks this first whatever is in slot one it checks first and then if that is what it is it'll just break so whatever you think you'll encounter the most um, I would put that in slot one and then second most in two and so on and so forth so that it doesn't loop as long to where it like don't put stone all the way down here so if the whole wall is stone it has to go all the way through six iterations before it gets there so um, this is just the order I put it in, but you, I, I would say put it in order of um, priority of whatever you're going to run across most. And then slot 16 is the ender chest. There's nothing in the code that really um, checks for these. It just... I put these up here so that you could remember which ones are which, but in the code it's all just numbers. It's slot 1 through whatever, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so first of all, we've got... Or first of all, we've got the UE function, as usual. I just, I don't even use that sometimes, but I throw it in there anyway. Um, the check inventory function is the same as it was from another script. I actually ripped it out completely in its entirety. Um, what's next? Check block is where we check to see if it's a block that we want to break. Eh, get it. So it sets want to break to false and then goes through slots 1 through 6, which as you can tell from those comments is the different blocks we'll run across. Um, and it selects that slot and then it runs compare and if compare returns true it means whatever you're looking at is one of these six blocks. So want to break equals false. I don't want to break it. That's the logic there. And then it breaks the loop because I've already, if it compares true then I already know what it is because it's whatever loop I'm on right there, so we don't need to loop through the rest. Hence why I said, don't put your most common thing you're going to run across down in six, because it'll run through all of these before it gets there. 
Otherwise, if it comes back false, it returns or it, it sets it to true. So if you go through all six slots and it's still true, it means I do want to break it because it's none of these, right? And then it returns one to break so that I know whether or not I want to break it, right? Now, dump. I revise slightly, it UEs, then it selects slot 16, places it so it puts the ender chest down. Um, it goes through slot 7 through 15, and that is because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 will be all of these items. Uh, pay no attention to these serums, I just had them from working with my bees in between, um, in between breaks. And then it'll go 7 through 15, and then 16 won't have anything in it because it's the ender chest slot. Right, So it goes 7 through 15, selects that slot, and then drops whatever's in it, and then selects 16, digs again, so it puts the chest back in the slot, and then turns back around. Right? Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Um, the next one is new. It's go up, which it says, while not detect up, meaning there's nothing above it, um, it tries, it says while up is false, because we've already detected to see there's nothing above it, so, um, but if it still can't move, it attacks and waits for half a second, like we've done before. Um, once it's done with that, then it runs check block. If it returns true, it says I want to break, so then it digs, and that'll put it in the nearest available slot, so the first one would be 7, and then 8, and so on and so forth. So right after it digs, then it checks the inventory. If the inventory returns that there's something in each slot, then it dumps. Right? Pretty simple. Oh, and then at the end, it sets direction to zero. Okay, this is important because direction, uh, you may have noticed up at the top, is set to one by default. One is up, zero is down in this code. So it went up, so when it finally hits to where, this is outside of the, the loop, by the way or the wall loop, so once this returns there is something above it and it's hitting its head on something, then it sets the direction to zero, meaning, okay, now the next thing I want to do is go down, right? Okay, that's going to come in, in later. It's kind of important. Next one is turn. Turn is going to... I have this code set up. You could change this if you wanted to. The code is currently set up to go left to right, okay? So whenever you place this guy down, you set him on the left corner and the bottom and let him go to up and to the right as he goes. Right? So it turns right. It tries to detect to see if there's something... Okay, so for example like this, it's going to turn right, see if there's something on this column in its way. If there is, it turns left and returns false. Okay, So it couldn't continue that way. Otherwise, it tries to move forward. If it can, it attacks. And then once it's moved forward, finally, it turns left again. So it's basically going to go right. Anything there? No? Good. Forward. Left. Okay? So it's basically just going along in a row. And then it returns true, so that it's saying, I did turn, and I did move on to the next row. Um, go down is pretty much the same as go up except reversed so it detects down if there's nothing there it tries to go down if it can it attacks um, then it checks the block in front of it if it is something it wants to break it digs and then checks the inventory and then it sets the direction to one this was my solution for not having any arguments was so it knew which way to go because as you've no doubt known from my past episodes um, when you specify a width, you know, I want it to go five blocks over, every time it got to the end of a row, it would check to see if it was an odd or even number and then go up or down accordingly. This was the alternative, is that if you're only going up and down, it goes up, okay, I reached the end, so now I want to go down, turn, go down, okay, now I've reached the end, so now go over, go up, etc. Alright? So now we get to the main loop which I don't think is too involved. The first thing it's going to do, as I've noted, is first block, because the first thing that go up and down functions do is it moves up one and then compares, so it would skip the very first block. So it checks once to see if it's something it wants to dig. If so, it digs. Then it goes into a while true loop, which is an infinite loop, until you break it. And it says, if direction is equal to 1, then go up, otherwise go down, and it's defaulted to 1, so the first thing it's going to do is go up. Okay? And then, it's going to go up or down, depending on direction, and then it says, if it can't turn, 
right? So if turn returns false so that it couldn't do it, it checks to see if direction is equal to zero, meaning it wants, it's already up at the top. And if it is, then while not detect down, so if, while there's nothing on the way back down, then move down, and then break this loop, which will break this infinite loop, right? Now, this is important. Um, the reason that this is here, okay, is let's, let's give you a little scenario here. So this is the bottom left corner, right? So the first thing it's going to do is go up. When it gets to the top, it's going to move over one and come down, okay? And then it's going to move over, go up, and so on and so forth. If it is down, so if direction is equal to one because go up sets direction equal to one, or no, my, I'm sorry, it's backwards. Go down, when it gets to the bottom, sets direction to 1, saying the next thing I want to do is go up. So once you've gone through these two, this sequence here, and turn is involved, if it can't move over any further, and direction is equal to 0, the only way this is going to happen is if it's all the way up at the top. Okay? Um, now, actually... You know what? We're going to change this because I just realized there is a scenario um, where it may not have... Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, no. That, that, no, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's just exit. We're not going to save that. Um, I did think that through before. I thought I missed a piece, but I think I got it. Anyway, so what's going to happen is, let's use this monitor as an example. Um, I would actually run the script, but um, it would tear the whole monitor up, so I don't want to do that. Okay. Ooh. <sighs> Excuse me. So the scenario here is we're going to start it here and, and go, right? Okay. So... If it goes up, right, and then if it can't move over and it's up tops, for example, if this is a one pillar, um, one column scenario, um, why is that tree show? Uh, sorry, sidetrack. Um, say this is a one column scenario. If it gets up to the top and then it can't turn, it's already gone up, right? So then I don't need to go down and check every block on the way back down because it's already come back up. So it just needs to move down for convenience so I don't have to go grab it up at the top, right? If it goes up and then over and it's going to come back down, then it hasn't moved over yet so it can still come back down and still check everything, right? So the only real scenario here is if direction equals down, meaning that it's it actually moved over and then went up and then can't turn, right? So it got up to the top and now it can't move over. But as we talked about, it's already gone all the way up and checked all these. So now I just want it to come straight down without checking anything for, for speed so that it's not running through each inventory slot every block and it just goes and it'll just book and just come straight down, right? Um, so that's what that's for. And then it breaks the loop, and then when you get out of the loop, can't go any further. So this is after it's at the bottom bottom right square, right? It can't go over any further, and it's checked all the walls or whatever. Then it just dumps whatever it's got in the inventory, and then it tells you that it's done, right? The reason I added this is because sometimes if you don't have some kind of message that tells you it's done you could come back and think it's done and it actually was because it unloaded the chunk or something um it doesn't happen real often it was just something that i felt like doing in this script um so so yeah and i copied that over to the disk but it is on here so we're gonna go run it real quick on our stuff down here um yeah, it's coming along, coming along. And I already did this section, which you can see. Now, there is something to note here, and that is anything behind the first layer, it won't get. So, as an example, this. There's a bunch of what looks like iron here. 
because it got all of the iron here, but it's two layers, right? I don't have it set up to where it'll dig all of this. I just didn't want to cover up minerals that are in the one block layer, right? Because um, I'm going to cover all this up with foam. So that's all I wanted to make sure. Yes, I'm wasting resources. Yes, you know, this is still good iron and you should probably get it. But um, that that little, like, I'd have to set up a script to where it comes in and then checks above it and checks below it and spins around and blah. That would just be a lot of block checking. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not particularly worth it to me. Um, I just want to get some extra resources before I block up the wall, basically. Um, but as you can see, there's really nothing other than these back behind but in this first layer you can see the little holes where it went and dug stuff out so it definitely works um let's I'll tell you what we'll do let's do a oh and this is on leonardo that has my shut up this is on leo that has a diamond pick so it will be able to get um stuff like this so let's go ahead and test it out here if I if I can no didn't want to do that sure why not and I do not have it digging up right so if it hits this even though it's iron it's not gonna do anything it'll just move over um, I'm going to probably duplicate this script also into a ceiling one that will go along the ceiling and do the same thing and just dig out the important stuff um, but that'll be for another another time so let's do stone cobble dirt marble sand gravel and then ender chest over here. So this is how you would set it up. Um, and then you do... I ended up making it picky wall. Right? Because this is... I want to mine out the wall, but it's picky about what it wants to take. So it's the picky wall script. Um, and we're going to put a block... Let's go ahead and put some along here so that it can't go any further than that. We'll do a controlled. See how it's not digging that stuff? Oop, I missed that. I need to fix that. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Ooh. Didn't think about that. That's why the um, obsidian was there. Hmm. And see, it can't go down, and then it comes back down. Dumps, and done. Right? So the only thing that I want to fix is after the turn, I need to add, I need to add another check, I think. Oh, um, so let's see here, if check block, then dig, and then check inventory. So I need to add that line after the turn line down here, I think. Or, oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll add it right into turn. That's what I'll do. So where's turn? Turn, okay, if detect, turn left, and then false wall, move forward turn left and then instead of returning straight to true what we'll do is if check block is true um, if check block equals true then we'll dig it I can dig it and then if check inventory is true then we'll dump stuff. And this should... This should then handle um, this scenario where it moves over and doesn't get the first block. So we'll run it real quick again and make sure... Oops. Doesn't really matter, but whatever. Let's 
see if that fixed it. Ba -ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -ba -bum. Got it. Okay. And now this should also do the same for here. It'll check that one. Oh, crap. Stupid turtle. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that'll fix it. So as you can see, it's, it's not a, a querying script for... I want every possible ore within this area to be gotten. You know, that's not what it's for. It's basically to make sure that just surface level, see, you can see all this glowy stuff and everything, that just that I don't block up anything that's right there and easily accessible that I just don't feel like going after. You know, that stuff, that stuff, that stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. Not way back in the canyons and all that crap. Um, that's that's what quarries are for. Um, so yeah, that works. Works well. Really happy with it. Um, I will be doing a ceiling one as well. I don't know that I'll show that one. I might just gloss over it right quick after I um, run it in like a later episode. I'll just, you know, because it's basically going to work the same way. It's just instead of up and down, it'll be forward and left and right instead of, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a like. Feel free to subscribe, all that stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Peace!